Good morning. This morning, I would like to talk to you about technology integration. And I think as we've all worked out in the, uh, in the real world for a while, it, be it pre-K-12 schools, um, colleges, universities, business and industry, we've all been involved with technology integration or implementation at one point or another. Um, maybe we have been um, a user, an end user, and uh, have been asked to use technology that's been implemented within our building or within our university. Or we may have been somebody that was actually in charge of implementing or integrating the technology. What I'd like you to do as I'm talking is I'd like you to just think a little bit in the background. What are some of the things that went right when you were involved with technology integration? What were some of the things that maybe went wrong or maybe didn't go as well as was expected or could have been expected? That's really what I'd like to talk to you about today. We seem to make, in my mind, a number of, same, of the same mistakes over and over when we integrate technology. And one of the technology, or I should say one of the integration mistakes I find is we don't have good professional learning or good professional development to back up the technology that we're integrating. We also don't always have clear expectations for that technology when we do integrate it. Or we, uh, we may not necessarily have a need. And so what I found when I think about those examples is I found that we tend to put the cart before the horse. We get really excited about technology. I do. I want to implement it all the time. But when we don't implement without having a solid plan, having solid expectations, we're doing exactly that. We're putting the cart before the horse. And one thing when I was thinking about, what does putting the cart before the horse mean? Well, I think it means some of the things that I just mentioned. But one example that I found on the internet was that um, that can be considered, it's easier, it is considered, it's easier to pull than push. And so when we're integrating technology, and we're not, we, we're putting the cart before the horse, we don't have a good plan, we end up pushing a lot of the time. We find out, oh my gosh, we don't have good professional learning for our staff. They don't know how to use the technology really well. We need to implement that right away. So all of a sudden, we're pushing. So why, why is some of this happening? Well, I think that a lot of the reasons that we get excited and we put technology um, before the horse, or I should say we put, uh, tech, or I should say we implement and do things before uh, the horse is that we do not have, um, or I should say, we get so excited that we don't think about all the different things that can come up. And one of the things that's driving this is a disruption. And I think that the disruption with technology that's driving a lot of this excitement and a lot of uh, not planning really well is the fact that um, we have the internet. And technology is coming at us faster than ever. And so when we think about not only the internet, and we know the internet's been around for a while. And the internet's been around since late 60s, ARPANET, et cetera. So, but what's happening now is with the advent of the World Wide Web, we have Web 2.0 technologies. We have great audio video streaming capabilities. We have um, web uh, video conferencing, Zoom technology, for example. And we also have cloud-based storage. So we have a lot of things that are at our fingertips. And so what we need to do is we need to make sure that we just don't act um, on impulse. I wanted to give an example. Back in 1994, I got a job working at Indian Hills Community College. It's down in Tumwa, Iowa. I just graduated from University of Northern Iowa. I had my master's degree. I was all fired up. I, was, uh, I got my master's in educational technology. I was all ready to go. So I got hired to be the uh, Star Schools coordinator for the Iowa Communications Network. And so each of the community colleges in the state of Iowa was in charge of implementing the Iowa Communications Network within their service region. So my job was to implement the Iowa Communications Network within the 10 counties that Indian Hills served. So throughout the process, what we did was we went out, and for those of you that may not be familiar with the Iowa Communications Network, it's a fiber optic network, goes to all 99 counties within the state of Iowa. And when we first rolled it out, it was to 
offer data services to the state of Iowa, voice or telephony services. But the reason that they hired us is the main selling point for the Iowa Communications Network was, or at least to the citizens of Iowa, was the fact that they were going to be able to, or we were going to implement two-way audio, two-way video classrooms and be able to teach classes in interactive fashion back and forth to different schools within the state. So what, what ended up happening though, as I was rolling this out and I was, my job was to go out to all the schools, talk to them about the network, get them fired up about the network and help them integrate their classroom. We had awesome uh, professional learning already planned. It was all coming from uh, University of Northern Iowa as well as some other entities. We had the technology, we had $20,000 classrooms. They're excellent classrooms. But as I started rolling this out with my colleagues across the state, what we realized was the people, which were the schools, the main schools that we were talking to initially with the rollout were the schools that were um, county seat schools, biggest schools within the state. They had no need for the ICN. And so that was really a blow to me because I didn't realize, I thought this was great technology, but the whole purpose of the ICN was so schools could share classes back and forth. So if you were um, Sheridan High School and you didn't have Russian, and another school, Storm Lake, had Russian, you could share that class. But the problem was that most of these schools were big enough that they had all the curriculum that they needed. So what we realized very quickly was that need is what, or what I should say I realized, is need is what really drives what's happening with technology, at least when you're integrating it large scale like that. So when I talk about need, I know that when I talked about, when I was thinking about this presentation, I was thinking, well, you know what's really important? Professional development's really important, and it is. And I also thought about the fact that um, you also have to have technology. You've got to get the technology out in the hands of the people that are going to use it. That's important too. But what I found through my, my experience with the ICN is, is what's really important is making sure that you have the need. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the need of the administrators. You have to be able to show the need, though, um, to the students, why they need the technology. You need to be able to show the parents why they need the technology, why the school board's spending $20,000 on a classroom. And you also have to show the need to um, the other folks, the uh, administrators, faculty, staff, etc. So when I think about technology, I think that we really need to be able to show that need up front. But what I also think we need to do, regardless of you're in a high-tech classroom or maybe a lower-tech classroom, is, is that when we're using technology, we also have to be able to document how we're using the technology. We have to be able to show not only our students, not only our, our fellow faculty members, administrators, the, uh, the folks in the community, we have to be able to document what's working, what's not working, why. And then what we need to do is we need to pass some information on, not only to other colleagues within our building, but also to other colleagues across the state, across the world. With that said, thank you very much. Have a good morning.